there you go. One attended a school in New York and was once described as the best director ever on stage. The other has publicly criticized Canadian singer Drake. Now, if you were thinking EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Mike Nichols is a theater director and entertainment critic from upstate New York. And Chris Brown is a podcast host from Alberta, Canada, who recently watched the Academy Award nominated film Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and realized it wasn't a biography about a current senator. Together, Michael Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as two people who aren't the people you're thinking of only can. This is No, Not Them. Michael, what's up? Wait, which senator? George Santos? I don't know. Well, totally. He produced Spider-Man. He, he worked for Goldman Sachs. He, he Obsessed. Politics. Um, so as we said in our last episode that was released on the first, we are back for our Oscar prediction episode. We're going to be talking about the Oscar predictions. And if you were thinking we're just doing the top ones, uh, hell no. We got 23 categories to get through over the next few hours. So let's get into it. Over the next few hours, we're going to be talking about every single category, our picks, our winners, and who we think are going to go home with the goal this Sunday. So, Michael, we are going to cut in uh, from time to time with the nominees as read out by us. And let's get this party started. And the nominees for Best Visual Effects are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of the Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Top Gun Maverick. So for best visual effects, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I watched all these movies, and I think you and I have, will both agree that we watched as many movies as we possibly can for this year's Oscars. For best visual effects, I'm just pulling up my nomination page here. I have, and I, I I'm going to be a little controversial here because most people might think that it's not a visual effect movie, but I have Top Gun Maverick as my movie that is going to be walking away with visual effects. I think it was probably one of the better well done movies with the other ones not doing that well in the visual effects department. What about yourself, Michael? Avatar, the no. only nomination it's going to get. Or the only, only win it's going to get. Nope. I think it's not going to get any. I. It I'm was per- a gorgeous screensaver. Are you kidding me? It's a gorgeous screensaver. It doesn't mean that it's a good movie just because you have no, one but it, pitch. But, this, but that's the thing. We're not c- critiquing it as a movie because it was a terrible movie. We're critiquing just the visual effects. Nope. And just the visual effects were spectacular. I did not feel like I was watching a... CGI movie when watching Top Gun Maverick. I felt like I was watching a movie that was filmed and actually uh, doing all these stunts in person. When I was watching Avatar, I went, oh, girl, this is horrible. Well, stunts don't count during visual effects. Understandable, but the visual effects that were happened in the movie as well were incredible. Because you did okay. not... Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, we are seven minutes in and we're already disagreeing. Just wait till we get to the big awards, everyone, because this is going to be an interesting experience. But why do you think, like, do you honestly think the Academy is going to give Avatar anything? Yeah, it's literally, and you know, and looking at all the other award shows, it's picking it up everywhere. And like, I'm playing to win. Like, well, I'm playing to win as well, but then I realized I'm up against you, so I'm not going to win. So I'm going with my gut. And my gut is telling me Top Gun Maverick is going to win best visual effects this year. Okay. I mean, we can both agree that Batman has no business being on this list. Uh, no, Colin Farrell's uh, visual effects of his uh, makeup was pretty horrendously bad. Good. That's makeup, though. That's not... Is it visual effects. <laughs> shade no i mean ugh, look, no i i'm avatar it literally was a pretty but screensaver i'm it's shocked picking... that black panther's on this one to be honest i'm not no let's be honest that movie like marvel went downhill for the last few years and their cgi department looks like it's been stretched thin that's the one i was shocked at no i um 
I wasn't really too shocked at any on this list other than Batman. I honestly, I'm a little shocked Batman got as many nominations as it did because that movie came out so late or so early in the year. And usually that gets forgotten about. And it wasn't like it was a breathtaking, life-changing movie. I'm still just still trying to figure out what the actual ending of that movie was all about. But you there are was an go- ending? <laughs> three hours later. <laughs> like <laughs> it felt like the Zack Snyder's Justice League had a better ending than that one. <laughs> I like Jack's I like Jack Snyder's Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be fun. So you are picking Avatar, Avatar, The Way of Water. I am going with Top Gun Maverick. We will see who ultimately comes out on top on Sunday. I think I am, but that's just me. I need those RuPaul goggles or <laughs> opera glasses. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Hold on. Hold on. I can't wait to see how this turns out. And the nominees for Best Film Editing are The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Tar, Top Gun Maverick. Now, the nominees for Best Film Editing, as we just mentioned, I will be honest. You're going to kind of start seeing a pattern here with Chris Brown for these lesser known awards. But for me, I'm going with Top Gun Maverick. I am I think Pop Gun Maverick is going to pick up a few awards this season. I think this is the year that it's going to be the Dune year for Top Gun Maverick. Um, I think it did incredibly well, a good job. I think overall, I think it is a picture that you can uh, constantly go back to and always see something new when it comes to the editing and how they showcase the story. So for my pick for best film editing, I'm going with Top Gun Maverick. So I disagree. I listen, Top Gun Maverick saved cinemas. Like we can all acknowledge that. I and I think it for that's it why it's going to get some awards this tomorrow on Sunday. I think it's going to get an award. Not this award. I think this is going to everything, everywhere, all at once. I think that the way that they edited that, especially flipping between the various multiverses at like, and having it flow through, like, oh, we're in this, and she's flipping through each one. It just was so well executed. It was seamless. It had immediate, like, quick transitions, and, like, the story never stopped. It didn't halt it. And that's difficult to do, especially when you're playing with the topics they're playing with in that film. I just think that this this has just such... It was so seamless. It was so brilliant. I, 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 I have to go everything, everywhere, all at once. Are you shocked Elvis is on this list? I am. No. Really? I was. That I was think the, the that was the one I went, what is this one doing here? Because after watching all of them, I went, mm, I can't see how this this is this is a good editing storyline. And I I just I didn't appreciate after watching all of them. And I thought Tar was gonna be that one for me. But for me, the unknown, the why are you here for me for this category has to be Elvis. For me, it's Tar. I really was- I was so hardcore, like Tar is a brilliant film. Everything about it's perfect. It can do no wrong. And then someone said to me, Michael, did you like Tar so much because it's a good film or because it's a really good performance? And I stopped and I thought about it and I went, uh, you're right. It's not a, it's an okay film. Kate Blanchett is what makes that film incredible. And so, like, and I know we're not at that point yet, but, like, I, I'm, yeah, no, Tar for me is I'm a little confused why she's there. Uh, Elvis, I think there was, the the transitions and the editing with Elvis didn't feel very jarring, whereas at times with Tar it did. Um, I think they both are weaker movies on this list, though. I'll give you that. No, and I will agree with that. So for you... Michael is going for everything, everywhere, all at once. And I'm going with Top Gun Maverick for best film editing. And the nominees are for costume design, Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, everything, everywhere, all at once. And Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. 
So best costume design, um, in case anyone was curious on who was going to be announcing this one, surprise, it was obviously me. Um, I have so much to say about all of these movies. Um, personally, I think every single one deserved to be there. I don't know what I would flip them out for. Um, and I honestly, I think it's going to go Black Panther, Wakanda forever. I think the costuming in that was just breathtaking. It was still grounded in reality, but it felt very fantasy inspired. It felt, it, it was, it was great. It was spectacular. And it will be the first time a black woman wins two Oscars. And I think that the Academy really wants to pat themselves on the back. How about you, I'm, Chris? I'm going to disagree here. Shocker. Three for three we've disagreed on so far. <laughs> I'm going with Elvis on this one. I think Elvis did an amazing job uh, on the design and the recreation of Elvis's look. And I think that's what really at the end of the day did it for me was when I was watching these movies, I was like, okay, um, Wakanda forever. Eh, it was okay. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. It looked like they went to winners, to be honest. Uh, Babylon. I was just not. Impressed. You bitch. <laughs> winners. Winners. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pay less better. Um, so for me, uh, it has to be Elvis. I, I'm going to. Th- um, so remember, guys, we are three into 23 categories and Michael is already calling me a bitch. This is going to be a fun, exciting experience. But for me, I think Elvis at the end of the day really showcased the costumes that Elvis was known for. And I know it's going off a of source material. But when you're doing a movie like Elvis, you have to get it right or people are going to notice. And for me, it really hit a home run for me. So for me, my desk, it has to be Elvis. Well, Can we talk we, about Miss Harris for a second? Can we talk I about movie. I love that movie so much. And it was incredible. And the costuming was fantastic. And it definitely deserves to be there. But there's no way in hell it's winning. <laughs> but this is the thing. You are, there's two movies right now that are like, neck and neck every like trading awards back and forth when they're in the same category and when they're not in the category they're each taking them so like contemporary versus historical and elvis and black panther are basically the two front runners here it's going to be one of them and it could go either way yep and i'd be okay with either one i'd be okay with either one to be honest but i think it, this might give my hand away a little bit. I think Elvis isn't picking up a lot this this award show. So this is where it came down to me for this to say, okay, Elvis is going to win at least one. And this is where it's going to win for me. Oh, real shade. I don't have Elvis anywhere. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's going to come down to one of those two. And I'm really... I'm excited to see where it goes because it's both good, good picks. It's just I'm gonna I, I'm gonna stick with Black Panther and and just to kind of recap, me Black Panther Wakanda forever, you, Elvis, you we're we're already at that point you, of the stage you. you, and the nominees for makeup and hairstyling are All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. And again, in a shocking twist no one saw coming, makeup and hairstyling announced by me. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't. I, I, we, we were picking these, and I literally went, I would like makeup and hair and costumes, and he went shocked. He, he was that Miranda Priestly <laughs> groundbreaking. Get me Pier 23 at 8 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> Um, yeah, this category was a little interesting to look this at. This was hard um, for me. This was hard this for was me. This was hard. This was a hard one for me, too, because there's a lot of good picks. And honestly, no, there's a lot of good picks for makeup and hair. I think you shady, shady, two, shady. Two of these movies had fat suits, and one of them did it well, and the other one didn't. So was it that hard? Um, one of them did it well, one of them just did it a lot better. B. 
because they used a smidge of CGI on instead of full prosthetics. But I mean, I, I'm picking the whale for this one. I think that it was the better of the fat suits. And, and that really does mean something with this category. Um, and the way that he had full range of his face with the prosthetics and the CGI they used, he was able to emote more than whatever the fuck ta, Tom Hanks was doing, because that was a choice. But I mean, again, Elvis in this category could be a sleeper. Like the way they did him an aged up Austin Butler was brilliant. And the fat suit on Austin Butler was actually well executed. What did you do? What'd you pick? Who'd you go with? I'm curious. Now. You're about to start seeing a very real pattern in my selections here. I'm going with all quiet on the Western front. I think they did a fantastic job recreating the world war two feel the look the, I know traditionally hair, hair and makeup aren't uh, known for the blood and gore, but for me, this really like showcased their work and their talent when it came to addressing I'm concerned. And this is why I didn't choose Elvis or the whale. And this is my concern. If they choose a movie where a prosthetic fat suit was used, are people going to be upset? And I'm not trying to be rude with that statement. I'm just being in today's culture. Are we going to get someone walking up on stage and slapping the winner in the face because they've made fun of the fact that someone's fat and they used a skinny actor in a prosthetic suit? And that is the ultimately ultimate reason why I chose All Quiet on the Western Front for makeup and hairstyling. It's just something has me concerned, and I I picked the safe bet in my words in my world. No, Will Smith's not there. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, I went with the whale. Be it's again, it's the whale and Elvis keep trading it at these Guild Awards and at, across the globe at all these different award shows. They're trading makeup and hair. And and I'm going with the whale because I think it was executed better. But again, I'm not going to count out Elvis. Um, yeah, I mean, Black Panther, Batman, cool, great, spectacular, loved it. It didn't, it, I don't, I don't know if either of them are super front runnery. I think though, what we could, we could see All Quiet win it split. based on a vote split, which also could be a reality. And, and, I, we don't know, though. This It is what it is. So just recapping, Christopher <laughs> picked All Quiet on the Western Front, and I picked The Whale. And the nominees for cinematography are All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. Um, so cinematography, I really enjoy watching a movie with their cinematography. And I really like looking at critiquing, commenting, exploring it. How do you feel about cinematography? Is that something that interests you? Or is that just, am I just a crazy person? You're a crazy person. <laughs> Girl, Fair. the crazy train Fair. left and Ozzy Osbourne's waiting for you on it. Okay. Like, not a lot of people are going to the movie and say, you know what? I really want to see a good movie with a good cinematography. A, because I think the majority of people don't understand what the fuck cinematography it's true. is. Most it's people true. are like, is that like when it's shown in the theaters? Is that the cinematography? Like, I, I'm not trying to be rude here. I just, to me, I like I, I like good storytelling. I like a good uh, scene, but at the end of the day, I the majority of people, and it's if there's ever one category where they can say, let's take this away, well, cinematography is probably that one. I disagree. Cinematography, for those who are not super aware of it, knowledgeable of it, it is the way that the scene is shot. So it's when you look at the camera, what you see in that scene it's how is that look like do you have the people directly in the center do you have them on the corner do you have the the just like a set looking out or like a, a landscape or in some instances do you have a filter on the lens why do you have the filter on the lens a good example of this west side story last year's nominee for cinematography 
Um, they put like a, a sepia filter on it uh, to give it that sort of 50s feel. It's how does the movie look and how is it shot? And, and for this one, like all of these movies were shot really well. Baz Luhrmann for Elvis, he's known for doing really like beautiful cinematography. Um, personally, I wish Empire of Light got more love this Academy Award season. And I'm going to be honest, I would have picked this if I thought it had any chance because it was my favorite of all of the cinematography. But I think this is going to All Quiet on the Western Front. Stop How the presses. Five we awards agree. in, and we finally agree on something. I think, and I think uh, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front did a fantastic job storytelling. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the this is this was the coda of this year, in my opinion, the sleeper of the movies, the movie that not a lot of people saw because no one really wants to go sit down and watch a two and a half hour, three hour movie uh, from a German language perspective. But honestly, I think more people should have seen this movie and I hope people do see it after this because it was shot perfectly. It, oh, was, it was great. It was beautifully told the. um. I, I don't know the gentleman's name off the top of my head. Uh, James Friend, uh, the cinematographer of this, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, did a fantastic job. And I highly recommend anyone watching it. If you Even if you don't like foreign uh, uh, language films, turn it off and just watch the visuals. Because even with just the visuals, you learn so much of what people were going through in that war. Well, and that's the thing. Netflix also does have a dubbed version of it, which I found out um, because another podcast I was on, we were talking about this and he got halfway through before he realized he was watching the dubbed version. So if you're like, I just refuse to read my movie, you can absolutely still watch this and like enjoy the film. Yeah. And it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix and there's still time for you to watch it before the Academy Awards. There is still plenty of time. But or or just really or just follow our uh, predictions and you'll win. <laughs> yep. So to recap, both of us straight shot across the board, all quiet on the Western Front. So this straight is shot across the board on a war movie, dude. Wow. <laughs> oh wow! I didn't even think of that. It's a good thing I'm pretty. <gasps> <laughs> and the nominees for best production design are all quiet on the Western Front. Avatar, The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, The Fablemans. So that's production design. I I, I said it, I'm going to be starting a pattern here over the last two. I'm going to continue the pattern because I think All Quiet on the Western Front for me, again, going back to the cinematography conversation we just had, was an amazing movie. It was shot correctly. It it transformed me into that war. It transformed me into that war. And I felt what the people were feeling in those trenches. And I, I rarely connect to a movie. Michael can attest to this. I do not like a lot of things in this world. You don't like anything. I, I agree, but still, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually a loss for words there. I I honestly believe that this is one movie and this this if this war award goes to anyone but all quiet on the western front I will be shocked and I will slap someone so hard that next year's Oscars I'll be canceled. So Michael, who'd you pick? All quiet on the western front? Good. Let's move on to well, the next Well, Will cast. Smith, well, Will, well, Will Smith, get your hand ready because Babylon is winning nope. as it has picked up every single award it's been nominated for for this category there is one thing that that man knows how to do and it, it's create a beautiful to look at film and that's the same guy who did la la land um i'm trying to find his name right now uh anthony carlino yeah, yeah he he it's it was beautiful beautiful to look at like the movie was hot fucking garbage hot fucking garbage the sets and especially the party scenes, it was just so well executed. And normally 
with costume design and production design, they usually go to the same movie. They usually do. Because in Babylon is nominated. So in costume I'm design, right. But no, costume design, you don't have All Quiet on the Western Front's not even nominated. I'm not right. No, so Babylon has picked it up because it like it has been picking it up. And I think this is one of the surest shots I have of all of the of all of the movies and all of the categories because it's like the only clear one where it's like there's there's nothing else. And watch me eat my words and like the Fablemans wins this, but I I just Avatar I, wins it. Or Avatar. I just I do not currently see a world where it does not go to Babylon. I would disagree with that. I think it was a really shitty movie, to be honest. And I'm calling well, I'm calling a spade a spade here. Babylon was a horrible movie from acting all the way down to costumes, all the way to production design, all the way to directing. It uh, to me, it just to I it was one and we're gonna get into best pictures here in a few minutes, bro, in about an hour. I didn't like a lot of the movies this year, to be honest. And I know you and I will disagree on that because you actually said you you liked it more, liked movies more. I did. I liked a lot Bab- of them. Like this movie, like I don't even think Babylon should have been nominated for anything, to be honest. But that's just me. I disagree. I think, you know, the, I, like I said, the movie was hot fucking garbage. It was not good. The only redeeming Margot quality. Margot Robbie? Felt, really? What happened there? Bad director. Is that what it was? Is that what it was? It was a bad it was a bad script written by the guy who directed it and it was after he lo- and it felt like La La Land was robbed of its award and I'm mad so I'm going to write a movie that says fuck you to Hollywood and like then doesn't take the metaphor of Babylon far enough and like half assed it. The only thing I think that was a saving grace was the production and the costumes for this movie. I just don't think it has any clear shot at winning costumes. But with production, like it was good. Like I can sit there and say movie was garbage and still had good qualities to it. And I think with this one, it really was just the production and just the costumes. And the costumes were a little bit above average. Enough to be nominated, not enough to win for me. But production... You talked about how uh, production design and costume design usually go hand in hand. The only movie they usually that, do. The only movie that's on these lists that were both nominated besides uh, no, the yeah besides Babylon is Elvis. Could Elvis could which potentially sweep? Not, because is that your second choice, Elvis? Who would be your second choice if Babylon does, you, doesn't win? Of all quiet would be my second choice. Yeah, I fully. I but I don't think I think we're gonna see all quiet because there's been so much buzz around it now. Like, like you said, like it's the coda that people. I think there's so much buzz that it's gonna flop ski, and it's not gonna perform as well as we all want it to. Just like the Fablemans, I think is not gonna perform as well. No, okay, no, I'll agree with that. Um, so just to recap here, I Chris Brown will be going with. All quiet on the Western front and no, not the EGOT winner, Mike Nichols, but the theater director from upstate New York is going with Babylon. And the nominees for sound are all quiet on the Western front, Avatar, the way of water, the Batman, Elvis and Top Gun Maverick. So sound from the loudest bitch in the room leading the charge. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Clear your ears out. Um, okay, so I Mariah. When, I think this is one you and I are going to agree on. I'm going to put like the mystical feelers out into the world. I went with the Top Gun Maverick. Did you go Top Gun? No. No, no more. No, nope, we're not agreeing. He went with All Quiet on the Western Front. Wait, did you go with Elvis? Okay, just just pick, tell me what you did. I'm trying to guess and you're throwing me for a whole ass loop now. I went with All Quiet on the Western Front for me. I mean, it's probably down to Top Gun and All Quiet. I think just I I honestly think just for sound wise, uh, as much as I said, uh, Top Gun's going to win visual effects. I think All Quiet on the Western Front did a much better job with the sound. And yet again, 
I felt like I was in that war. I know I wasn't. I For anyone who's about to say you weren't, but for me, I honestly think it was a good movie, and I think it honestly... I When I get transported into a film and I can feel what the actors are feeling and uh, I can... Uh, there's a connection to this movie. Everything I'm picking... I felt a connection to spoiler alert on the, some later <laughs> categories here. But for me, sound has to be all quiet on the Western front for me. I think the sound mixing and the sound editing they did on those airplanes is insanely difficult and it was perfect. And so was that's it, why I think it's going top gun Matt. Yeah. Was there an old category called sound mixing best sound? Mixing? Yeah. So sound mixing and sound editing were the two older categories. This was maybe five years ago two or three years no like two or three years ago and they always went to the same movie and so they said we don't need to have 24 fucking categories let's just snip you don't need 23 but here we are no i think i think the next ones that you might see go together are going to probably be um makeup and hair merging with costumes yeah or score and song merging together but I don't think that a lot of, I think that they're strong enough as separate categories that they don't necessarily need to bleed into each other. No, understandable. I just, I think Western, if we're all quiet on the Western front for me had a better sound version to it. Uh, the easy answer, I just want to make sure the easy answer would have been to, for me to go with Elvis because that was my second choice was to go to Elvis because just it felt like I was at in Vegas while he was doing it. It's just let's just let's, there's a lot of other issues with that movie that I could probably talk about for three hours and I don't want to. Tom I, Hanks. All of the acting. Don't know why Austin Butler was even nominated, but here we are in this screwed up world called 2023. I I just I found for me. This was a good movie. And I keep on harking back to this. And I know I'm going to get some very weird comments from people who listen to this show. But to me, All Quiet on the Western Front for sound for sure. Okay, so to recap, you're going with All Quiet on the Western Front and I'm going with the Top Gun Maverick. And the nominees for our best original song are Applause from Tell It Like a Woman, Music and Lyrics by Diane Warren. Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, music and lyrics by Lady Gaga and Blood Pop. Lift Me Up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, music by Thames, Rihanna, Ryan Coogler, and Ludwig Göransson. lyrics by Thames and Ryan Coogler. Natu Natu from RRR, music by M.M. Kiravani, lyrics by Chandra Bose. And This Is A Life from Everything Everywhere All At Once, music by Ryan Lott, David Byrne and Mitski. Lyrics by Ryan Lott and David Byrne. All righty, original song. We've got a lot of pop stars writing these music and doing it. And we have Diane, what's her name? Diane Warren. Diane Warren. Yeah, Diane Warren. She's been nominated a lot and she ain't won. What is what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? I'm curious. Are you giving it to Diane? Uh Chris Brown is. Picking on our good old friend Rihanna. So I'm going with Rihanna because I believe that, in my opinion, Lift Me Up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever was not the best song of the year. But I think out of the five that were nominated, uh, I, I I was a little bit back and forth between applause from Tell It Like a Woman with Diane Warren and Rihanna. But I think... Rihanna's year is 2023, so I think they're going to give it to her. When are we going to give Diane Warren her flowers? As soon as Susan Lucci does as well. No, she got, she won. She finally won. 30 years after starting. I'm pretty sure it's been 30 years for Diane. 20, but it, it's just still got another 10 years. Poor woman. So har harmful. I, I'm not giving it to her. I'm not either. I'm giving it to... <laughs> Not too, not too from RRR. Again, this is another one that's pretty much picked it up everywhere. Has it? Everything, everywhere, all see, at once. See, yeah. see, okay. 
I'm calling you out right now on this because this is the issue with o- playing Oscar predictions with Mike Nichols is he's like, I'm going to study the stats and I'm going to do the algorithms and I'm going to yes. make sure. And I'm like, who should win? Who should win? Because honestly, Which is why you're more admirable than I am. But I also agree with a lot of the ones I'm picking. Like, I really do agree with a lot of the ones I'm picking. I justified pretty much every win except for cinematography. I said it wasn't my favorite, but I knew Empire of Light had no shot. Every single other one I've agreed with, what I picked. Okay. I just, I do like this song. It also is picking up everywhere. I didn't like Rihanna's song. I'm, I love Rihanna. Love Rihanna. Didn't like it. Just like I, I Diane Warren's song was cute. But I am, I'm going with Natu Natu from RRR. And I do think that they're leaning probably more towards this as well because the movie is being deemed a snub for best picture. It is. Oh yeah, people are real, real mad that it's not there. Okay, I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> you to each their own. Like I'm not, I'm not going to throw shade at anyone because that's not what I do on this show. I that's am a sus- fucking lie. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. Sometimes I feel attacked on this show from Michael Nichols, and yeah, but you like it. Yes, it makes but- good TV or TV, whatever this is, YouTube podcast TV. Like back only only be doing here. this for three years and he still doesn't know what the fuck he's on, everyone. This is me. No, not that. <laughs> it's cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> Just recap the fucking... <laughs> so to recap, Unana, what's her name? Chris is going with Lift Me Up from Black Panther and I'm going with Natu Natu from RRR. And the nominees for Best Original Score are... All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans. Okay, best original score. Uh, so I try to spread the love. I try to be happy. I try to make everyone feel content. I'm throwing a little bit of a curveball in my predictions on this one. Because I think Babylon. Okay, Michael can't talk for the next five minutes. He's been banished to the mute section of uh, the Zoom call. Um, So I'm going with the Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, I was not, I was, it was a very close toss up for me because I really wanted to go with All Quiet on the Western Front. But to me, the Banshees of Inishirin really did a good job. And while I think the All Quiet on the Western Front is going to pick up a lot of these awards, I am being a little generous to my Colin Farrell and my Brandon Gleason by giving the Banshees of Inn Sheeran uh, original score on this one. Michael, what has everyone picked besides you? Because you've gone with the algorithm and the uh I did statistic- not go with the I did not go with the algorithm. Okay. I told you I don't I don't go like if I agree I agree if I don't whoa, unless it's whoa, like a clear whoa. front run, you're do, just coming from my edges. Do, do you need a safe space right now? Do we need to talk? I do. Do, we need, do we need to pause the Zoom? <laughs> no, because Babylon and All Quiet on the Western Front are currently the two front runners for score. But I went with the Fablemans. Really? Yeah. Did you just look at me like why are you coming for me, girl? <laughs> I like John Williams and John Williams does it for me. And John Williams usually snags it. And I mean, I could see people being like, yeah, many times I could feel like they'd be like, John Williams, we love you. He's retiring, right? Like he's done after this. So this might be his, his Holland's opus. And it's good. It's very good. I think it was good. good. I just think Banshees of Vanish and were better. So that's just me. Okay. Yeah. Um, Uh, So to recap, because it seems like we don't really have much to say about the original scores of movie as much as we do about cinematography or makeup. To recap, I am going with the Banshees of Inishirin, and he is going with John Williams. Actually, that's true. You know what? Fuck, now you got me thinking to myself, because I didn't even think about that. I looked at it as more, I didn't look at the people, right? I looked at 
as the production, right? And now that you said John Williams, I'm like, oh, you are fucking you, right on this one. I think like, you're you actually- can't, in each of these categories, you have to look at what the category is and what the movie is. Like, no, I, I look, I, I do, I, I agree with that. I, I completely agree with that, but I'm not looking at the person who was nominated. I'm looking at the movie and I'm looking at the category. I'm not looking at, okay, John Williams was the person uh, uh, nominated for best original score. And I'm like, well, it's John Williams. So now that you said it's John Williams, it's got me second guessing myself. I'm like, oh, God. So uh, you might be right. Are you sticking? Are you sticking no, with? I'm sticking with Banshees of Inisherin because I, I stick to my guns. I don't flip flop like other people. And I, I, I stick. I stick with what I do. That's not shade at you. That's shade at two other people who have told me oh. that I flip flop too much. So I'm going with the Banshees of Minas Sharon because people tell me I flip flop too much. So screw you people who listen to me. Um, so to recap, I'm going with the Banshees <laughs> of Minas Sharon. You're going with the Fablements for best original score. <laughs> and the nominees for best animated short film are The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, and An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake and I Think I Believe It. The best animated short, there is uh, one good movie on this list and four others that should not have been nominated. Uh, I'm going to go with my Canada home hometown Halifax explosion, The Flying Sailor. Uh, Michael, what about yourself? Not my year of dicks. Did you? Okay. 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 Hold on two seconds for anyone who's, who's listening to this right now. I literally did a joke two minutes ago and it didn't land. And now he is trying to use the same joke, but not the same joke because my joke. Wait, no, I thought you, you're going to edit it out though. I know, but now I have to say this, and now it's going to look like I'm actually being very vindictive because I didn't leave it in, and I edited it out. But, no. I'm going with The Flying Sailor. I think it was a well-executed movie, and I think, oh, well-executed. With flopping penis? Half the movies had dicks in it this year, okay, girl? And they really <laughs> did. I was like, what is with all this penis? <laughs> like the, My the, year of dicks the, was watching the Oscar films. <laughs> Um, I'm going with the boy, the male, the boy, the male, the fox and the horse, the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. FYI, if you're wondering what Michael has on his mind, it is not the boy, the mole, the fox and the whatever you want to call it, the horse. But it's my, I liked my year of dicks best. I just think it was never going to win at all. Like great that it got nominated. It was cool. I agree. I I didn't really get a lot of how do I say this? There was no joy sparked. Yeah, for any of them this year. I watched them and I was like I I guess these are good. Like if if the Oscars say they're good. I'm not sure if there was others that were nominated because this the issue is we never know what was nominated beside it. It's just here's the five that we're choosing and I'm like who, who, what other ones were nominated? Because I'd rather see what was nominated that I could make a better choice. But for the five that were there, the Flying Sailors for me, just because of the Canadian connection. And I know I said this year I wouldn't do the Canadian connection, but fuck you all. I'm going with the Canadian connection on this one. Yeah, I mean, with the shorts, they're also so hard to find. Yeah. Did you watch all like, five? I could not get the, an ostrich told me the world was fake. And I think uh, I believed it. Which I know, I think you said you liked. It wasn't bad. Um, it's in the style of Wallace and Gromit. So that was the only issue. And I just, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing with the animated shorts, you can sometimes look at like, what's the animation style and pick when. I think the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse had the better of the animation style. Yeah. For everything nominated. And so that's kind of why I'm going with it. But like, I don't know. I feel like, with the shorts, I almost need to watch the entire short list that they release or that gets leaked usually so that I know what else is out there. But it's like finding even these five is damn near impossible. I agree wholeheartedly on that one. It, to me, it was just <sighs> maybe next year they'll have a good one. I don't like I 
these are the categories. These shorts are usually the categories that no one remembers. It's always the like I like I appreciate people putting these films together and them getting released, but no one's tuning into the Oscars besides the family who helped make these films to say, I really hope a year of dicks wins the Oscars. I do hope. Why? Just because the person who has to read it out loud. Like when they were nominating, when the nominations came out, the person who read read it like burst out laughing, and the two people who were reading the nominations like snickered during an ostrich told me the world is, yeah. No, I just liked it because it was irreverent and it was funny. It was not groundbreaking. It did not change my life. Like it just, it, I wanted, I wanted to win because it was just fun and like not everything needs to be so goddamn serious. So why like, did you go it's with not it? Gonna win. Go with it. Go with it. Because it has no shot at winning. And I think the animation style for the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse was better because that year of Dick's animation was rough to watch. So to recap, Michael is going with the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. And I, Chris Brown, your co-host, is is going with the flying sailor for best animated short film. And the nominees for Best Live Action Short Film are An Irish Goodbye, Evalue, La Pupilelle, Night Ride, and The Red Suitcase. Now heading over to the Best Live Action Short Film, another category, as we just talked about, that everyone tunes in to see who's going to win because that's the big one. Um... I will be up front. I think I remember watching all five of these movies, but I could have fallen asleep during one of them and I might not have seen it. So I'm I'm ju- I'm basing this on the ones that I can remember. <laughs> so for me, and I think this is not a shock, I'm going with a Irish goodbye. I think it was a good uh, movie. I think it was uh, a poignant. And Michael in the last segment talked about not earth shattering. While it wasn't earth shattering, it was actually a very good movie. And it was one of these shorts that I was like, okay, I can see why it was nominated. Michael? Hell has frozen over twice. We agree. I am picking an Irish goodbye for this. I'm going to be real honest with you on this one specifically. I only saw two of them and this was not one of them. I went, what is the algorithm saying? Great. And plugged it in and moved forward because I could not find these anywhere. Like, and, and then I wasn't going to go pay $20 to go sit in a movie theater to watch them when I'd already seen two at home next year. I found out, a little too late this year that there is a uh, indie cinema that will do all the shorts in one sitting for like 10, 15 bucks for all the live action, then 10, 15 for the animated and then 10, 15 for the documentary. I'm just going to do that rather than watch some of them at home, watch them all at one fell swoop. Cause like I have, I really can't judge this category. So I'm going with the algorithm and I'm going an Irish goodbye. So to recap, because we don't want to beat a dead horse here, just because Michael hasn't seen all of them, uh, for live action short film, we are both going with, yet again, Hell Has Frozen Over, maybe the Toronto Maple Leafs may win another Stanley Cup, maybe Cher will stop doing reunion tours, uh, no. but until then, we're both going with an Irish goodbye. And the nominees are, oh, what the fuck? And the nominees for documentary short film are... The Elephant Whispers, Hall Out, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, Stranger at the Gate. So in keeping up with the short conversations on the shorts, we're moving forward with the documentary short film category, which honestly had quite a bit of access to these. I was able to watch all four of them in one day and like from home, from the comfort of my couch. You were able to watch four of five, right? Yeah, I the, okay because you, you said all year? four. I was like, "What do you mean all four? Did oh. I did did I watch one that I wasn't supposed to?" No, 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 no. I could not get. How do you measure a year? It's the only one I couldn't get, 
And so I watched the trailer and I said, yeah, that's not winning. And said, I'm not going to go to the dark web to try and locate this thing. So I skipped it and I'm happy to say I skipped it. Um, I really like the elephant whisperers. It just was so sweet. What's you the al- like it? What's the algorithm say? Is it is that the one? That's I don't picking? know on this one. I don't know on this one. Okay. With a lot of the shorts, I I don't care. So I just picked what I've wanted. I didn't mind the elephant whisperers. It wasn't my favorite. wasn't my Wasn't my least favorite either. So I would say it's in the middle of the pack for me. You you know me, Michael. I'm a I'm a political geek through and through. I if if there's a movie about a political documentary documentary, I'm there. I'm fucking first in line. I will go see it. I think I saw Fog of War twice in theaters, and that was that one for best uh, documentary way back in the early 2000s. So for me, I'm going with the Martha Mitchell effect. Uh, it was recently a Showtime movie with Sean Penn and Julia Roberts. And this is the documentary telling that story basically in a short form version. But to me, it was well executed and kind of, I kind of, it kind of grew on me. <laughs> like, I, I love Martha Mitchell even more now. You didn't like it, did you? No, I didn't. I mean, it was fine. I think that bottom? out of all the. <laughs> Who, who's your, who's the bottom here besides the one that you didn't see out of the four you saw? Yeah. Okay. I thought you said all out. I was like, is there another one I didn't see? But it's all no, out. No, all out. <laughs> yeah. I um, agree wholeheartedly. Me, Elephant Whisperers, Stranger at the Gate, uh, Martha Mitchell, Hall Out. And then because I didn't see it, How Do You Measure a Year? But I think How Do You Measure a Year would have gone above Hall Out. And I was I went Martha Mitchell, Stranger at a Gate. And then so elephant stars. Yeah, I think, and this is this is where I think this is gonna come down to. I think Strangers at a Gate is gonna win. I don't. I the bait I, and switch was just not cute. Okay, okay. I think it's gonna win though. I. Mm-hmm. I be, then why look, did you pick it? Because I'm going with the one I think should win. Because okay. I I stick to my guns and I I believe. Okay, I believe the Martha Mitchell effect will win. So um, it just very well might. The true. shorts are always crazy. The shorts you also can't really go algorithm with because it's just usually all over the place. Yeah, because nobody watches them. The Oscar of voters they literally go eeny meeny miny you. Half the time they're like, ah. hey, the Martha Mitchell effect on the Rotten Tomato. A review algor- uh, agitator, whatever the fuck it is, it has a hundred percent rating. That's based, cool. Based on five critics, <laughs> four of which were from Chris Brown's household. Amen to that, sister. <laughs> this is oh, your category, so girl. <laughs> I know. I'm like I'm waiting for you to recap it. My brain is not happening. So to recap, Chris Brown is putting all of his money on Martha Mitchell effect, and I am putting all of my money on the Elephant Whisperers. And the nominees for documentary feature film are All That Breathes, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navalny. And with moving forward from documentary short right into documentary feature film, um, Chris Brown, why is it the birds? And <laughs> okay, okay. So when this comes out, speaking of birds for a second, literally speaking of birds, this Saturday, anyone who knows me knows I'm deathly afraid of birds, hate them with a passion, despise them with a passion, get scared of them. I went to London, I went to freaking uh, uh, Paris, and I went to Amsterdam. The pigeon population there, I literally shot myself the entire time. This Saturday, at the day after this comes out, I'm going to a freaking wild prey bird sanctuary in alberta and they're putting a bird a bald fucking eagle on me and i'm getting Why? a photo taken and they're going to let the bald eagle or owl i'm not 100 sure yet fly up and land on my arm why you might ask because i decided why not do what people ask me to do so I'm going to a bird sanctuary and probably not coming out alive. 
Cancer's not going to kill me. A fucking bald eagle will. <laughs> so you went with all that breathes then for this documentary feature film? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> well, I'll be breathing something after Saturday. No, I didn't go with either one of those. You went with Fire of Love. I did. Uh, climate change is the thing right now. Climate change is the thing. Everyone's about the climate change. I'm going to climate change. But was it the one you felt was best in your heart? No. No, 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 no. Which was the one that you felt was best in your heart? Mm, the one you fucking chose, probably. Navalny? Yeah. And the only reason I say that is because fucking Russia is the new cool thing right now. Um, When he, spoiler alert, called that dude and had on camera the dude admitting to trying to kill him for, for Putin, I was like, like gasping clutching my pearls like shook it's on hbo max y'all this is one crave tv for watch. anyone who's actually watching in canada just a reminder oh, that uh, yeah. hbo max is not in canada so for those canadians listen that. you and me both girl it was so good y'all go watch go watch her she's everything i i <laughs> You your, you didn't go with your heart on this one, and I'm shook. I know. We would have agreed. I, we would have agreed a third I, time. This this one was tough for me because I didn't know what was more popular in Hollywood right now. Are we still on the climate change issue, or are we on the Russian war issue right now? Do you give a movie? Do you give a movie bashing Russia, or do you not? It just, honestly it was back and forth for me. So something that helped me with this one in particular. Who was your second? Was... Who was your second? Sorry. I did like Fire of Love, but the big thing to re to kind of go off of with documentaries, they really don't like awarding it to found footage documentaries. A lot of times that's like a huge, huge, like, now nah, we're not going to do that at the Academy Awards. So with Navalny, it was not found footage. It was all like freshly shot and like, I really, really liked it too. It... But remember how you were saying fuck the algorithm and you went with the algorithm on this one. I huh. did. I did. Huh. I did. But I, I huh. it, it was honestly, uh, but, but Hey, do I know if all of these algorithms are paying attention? I don't know. Do I know if uh, fire of love has been winning all these awards? No one. know why? Because it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. It matters what I feel in my heart and my heart okay. was, was split. It was split. It, I was like a 13 year old schoolboy. I didn't know if I should be gay or be straight. European. It was very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, it had to be fire of love. Okay. So to recap, I went with Navalny and Chris went with fire of love and we could have had a beautiful agreement for the third time, but he said, nah. Mm, yeah, pretty much. And the nominees for best international feature film are all quiet on the Western front from Germany, Argentina, 1985 from Argentina, close from Belgium, EO from Poland and The Quiet Girl from Ireland. All righty, so international feature film. Um, a whole category for the entire rest of the world that's <laughs> not United States. Um, I think that we've said this in the past. We've hammered it in the past. When your movie's nominated for Best Picture or for other categories, there's a really good chance that, girl, you gonna win. So... I went with All Quiet on the Western Front. What? What? You went are, with EO? Are you telling me right here, right now, that we actually agree on more than two things in this Oscar category? Well, like, this was the only category I knew we were going to agree on. This is the only one I went and going, we agree on anything. It will be international feature film. I I wholeheartedly agree with you. Uh, we jokingly said prior to the recording that uh, this is going to be the quickest category. And it is because you get nominated for best foreign feature and best picture in the same year. Guess what, guys? You're going to win one of them. But don't tell anyone. 
Yeah, and like, if we're being honest, the Academy is not going to watch all five of these. They're going to watch All Quiet because it got nominated for Best Picture, and they're going to go, great, check. I think they might watch Argentina in 1985 just because of the whole... uh, um, mm, civil discourse that's going on down there but i think a lot of people don't under, even understand where argentina is to be honest they might yeah, go i don't think they're watching it it's in that area i know one of my friends who uh is from uh latin america uh put on her social media that uh it is the greatest movie since sliced bread it's going to win and i kind of had to bite my tongue and say girl <laughs> if you think it's gonna win i have oceanfront property in nevada that i want to sell you yeah there is a whole algorithm saying that it's not (laughs) yeah and it's called michael and chris all righty so just to recap hell froze over a third time and we both agree all quiet on the western front okay and the nominees for best animated feature film are guillermo del toro pinocchio marcel the shell with shoes on Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, Turning Red. Best animated feature film. I'm only counting four because four of them came out last year. (laughs) Not saying which one, but I will mention, I will not be mentioning the name of that movie, if you can call it that, in this segment. What? What? What do you it's get? Not a, even, it's only like 60% animated, too. That's the other thing, too. Uh, with best animated feature film, I actually had a hard time on this one. I really had a hard time on choosing this one because I wanted to go <laughs> with the algorithm because I wanted to win something so I can say that I've won something. But then I went with my heart. And I really went with my heart on this one. And I went with Pinocchio. Wait. That is the algorithm. What? No. I thought yeah. the Sea Beast was the algorithm. No, girl. The Sea Beast is not winning a goddamn <laughs> fucking award. Okay. Never mind. Okay. I'm choosing. No, this uh... is picked up everywhere. This is picked up everything. Oh, and, like, this is picked up everything everywhere all at once. Um, I'm, I've made that joke like three or four times. Done. And I'm going to keep making get, that get joke. Out. Get out. I'm going to keep making that joke. Um, yeah. I mean, it's picked up everything. I... I didn't like it. I didn't like it. The only movie I got halfway through and I said, I I think I've seen enough. Yep. I could have done that. That was an option? (laughs) (laughs) That was an option for this one movie because my (laughs) husband and I were watching it and we paused it because the dog, it was one of those really cold nights that we had and the dog was pissing all over the house and he was brand new and I had to clean up pee. And I finally, I'm just like, I really don't want to finish this. I don't care. And I was reading, um, but you saw enough that you could say, "Yeah, it's, it's gonna the work. animation style." It like yeah. this year. It's, what was your second? My second, in terms of my second, was what I think should win. This is gonna be a shook. You're gonna be shook. Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Oh yeah, that's right. I had so much fun watching this movie. So much fun. It just you, was never gonna win. No, see, my second. Turning red. I like turning red. I really did like turning red. I just think that the animation I, that Guillermo del Toro did was perfect. Yeah. yeah. It just was a shitty story. Yeah. Well, mark the calendars four for four. We are on a roll for 19 potential categories where we disagree and four where we actually agree. But who knows? We'll tune in. Um, so just to recap, we are both going with Guillermo de Tel- del Toro's Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro's <laughs> Pinocchio? Yep. And the nominees for Best Adapted Screenplay are All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. All righty. What's better than a screenplay? A screenplay adapted from something. Get it. I don't know Get. where I was going with that. It felt like um, you started, like you were like, I have a joke. I'm ready for said joke. And then about halfway through, you went, I don't remember what the joke was, and I'm 90% sure I have to end with something. 
I um I don't know. It just it was a flop. I'm in my flop era. It's fine. Um yeah, so you wanna know what drives me nuts? A movie adapted from another fucking movie. Really? I don't like I don't like because like some of them like Top Gun adapted from Top Gun. Glass Onion adapted from Knives Out. Like, oh, I just am not, it's not it for me. Like for me, an adapted screenplay is like adapted from like a book. And like only two of these fit that category. Because Living also is adapted from the Japanese film, Living. Yeah. That being said, I'm picking Women Talking. I know you were going to, which is weird, which is very weird. And you're picking Living. God, no. No, you're picking All Quiet on the Western Front. Of course. <laughs> like, seriously, have you not seen a pattern so far? Um, This is one of those times where I don't know what direction it's going to go. The Women Talking won adapted at the Writers Guild Awards. But, like, I also felt that this was, like, the best script of all the scripts here. I felt this was the strongest script. I think this was the strongest movie of all the movies. Um, and I really saddened it did not get the love it deserved. Um, and I hope when they inevitably adapt it for the stage that it gets the love it deserves. Claire it Foy was, was probably, awesome in that. Claire Foy was one of the best, the reasons why that movie was good, in my opinion. All of them, all of them, every single one of them. And I don't know how you give a single one of them an Oscar nomination and not the whole cast. The only one you could kind of like split away as like a not really part of the ensemble was Ben Wishaw, but you're not going to give the one man in the film women talking an Oscar nomination and none of the other women. So yeah. like if there was an ensemble category, best ensemble cast, I feel like this would have gotten the nomination would have won. True. True. And I could see that happening. I know you and I have a dis uh, difference of an opinion, but we're going to be talking about that in the acting categories of the, uh, the segment here, but um, I, I I'm going with All Quiet on the Western Front. Like, I I've read the novel. I watched the original the the move the first movie that the the first uh movie uh based on the book, and I watched this, and I think they did a better job. I actually I honestly will say they did a better job adapting it this time than they did in the uh, '60s when they originally did it. So, to me, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, uh, best adapted screenplay based on the movie. No, it's based on the book. They're based not based on the book. On Sorry, the based on the book. Sorry, it's been a long day, guys. I know no, it no, no, seems like I know it seems like it's been an hour and a half, but for us, it's been about twelve. No, but with with it, because they they could have said based on the movie, but they based <laughs> it on the novel. So I I I'm okay with that one. These are the only two that I'm like, I did like living. I did like it. It's just I didn't love it. Yeah, but again, that's just that is what it is. Um, I think women talking for recap and you think all quiet on the Western front. And the nominees for best original screenplay are the Banshees of Inishirin, everything everywhere, all at once, the Fablemans tar and triangle of sadness. Now heading into the original screenplay. And this is great because these are the, some of the movies that are actually based on things that actually are new which in hollywood means like 10 movies every year because they always have a hard time coming up with new material um i had a hard time with this one i really had a hard time with this one and i know you didn't because i know what your pick is what am i well, picking i don't know something you something, just said you know what i'm picking something somewhere somewhere all at once who was really bad and horrible but for me, ew, David. I I was stuck between the Fablemans and the Banshees of Inishirin. I like Fablemans. No, God, no. You with Banshees? I did. I felt I felt it was a better script. I honestly did. I I I connected with the actors a little bit more than I did with the the uh, Fablemans. So. I, I I appreciated it a little bit more, and I think the writing was a lot more sound when it came to two friends fighting. Yeah, for me, um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Shocker. <laughs> this, this, 
was such a good movie. It was not the best movie this year, but also I think that with regards to this picking up a ton of wins, I think that they can say, look at how woke we are. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is the first time an Asian woman is nominated in best actress and is a very strong contender for it. I, I, and I think the script was fantastic. I really liked the script. I think it was a really incredible movie. I, I want to rewatch it because I watched it 4th of July, actually. We went over to a friend's house and we watched it. And I feel like I need to rewatch it again in order to like really enjoy it. And I've heard people say that once they've rewatched it, knowing a little more of what's going on, they're, they like it better. So I kind of want to go in and rewatch it and see how my opinion changes, um, especially after watching so many of these in succession, because I did not rewatch anything I yeah. had previously watched throughout the year. So to recap here, I am going with the winner of best original screenplay, which is going to be the Banshees of Inishirin. And Michael is going with some movie that he watched in July that he never really rewatched after that. So he hasn't seen it since 2022. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And the nominees for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Hong Chao, The Whale, Carrie Condon, The Banshees of Inishirin, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie Su, Everything Everywhere All at Once. To quote a wise and prolific poet, Stop. Angela Bassett Stop. did the thing. <laughs> I, I I don't know where to go from that. I just I had to throw it in there. Um, I hope when Angela Bassett accepts her award that uh, she says, I did the thing, just like she did at the end and NAACP awards, image awards. She got up there and she said, I guess Angela Bassett did the thing. One one time it's funny, second time it's never gonna happen. Um, so I don't think Angela Bassett's going to win this. I, I honestly don't. I know the algorithm says that she's going to, but no, I'm going to. Doesn't. doesn't it the anymore? Doesn't, the algorithm doesn't know who's going to win this. It's literally down to like four people. So I'm going Out with of five. I'm going with my gut on this one, my true gut <laughs> and my heart and my desire to see this woman win an Oscar because I think she has been one of the most underrated actors in all of Hollywood. I'm going with Jamie Lee Curtis for everything, everywhere, all at once. So like, listen, Jamie Lee Curtis was fine in everything, everywhere, all at once. Hong Chao was my favorite of all of these performances. And the only one besides Stephanie Sue that I felt like really was like, wow, this should be a nominated performance. Um, Angela Bassett should have won her goddamn award for what's love got to do with it. Yeah. And I think that that's what's going to win her this award is everyone went, because everyone's been saying for the past like 10, 15, 20 years, like why didn't Angela Bassett win for what's love got to do with it? And the Oscars likes to do that of, oh, she should have won, we made a mistake, let's give it to her here, especially when it's like not a strong category. Because this category is a little weaker in terms of the performances across it. I don't know what is going to happen with this category. And I think you're going back to- I don't the, either. And I think this is the unknown, this is the one category that I think Oscar Knight is- going to be completely and it's usually one of the first two that's announced because usually they do supporting actor and supporting actress but it's going to be a very interesting night if if jamie lee curtis wins this it's going to be a rough night for a lot of movies and i only say that by saying this because i think then we're going to have a lot more splits if J- no, because with the way the SAG went, if Jamie Lee Curtis wins this, it's going to be a great night for everything, everywhere, all at once. Because oh, it's going think? to win okay. everything, everywhere, all because it's it swept all the Guild Awards. It like swept every category it was in in the Guild Awards. Okay, like people really, really are like pushing this movie, which is also why I'm like I don't feel bad if I pick it. If I'm kind of like, mm, what do I do? I'm gonna go with this one. 
Um, I do. I, you know what? This may be a shock, a shocker. We're going to throw this out there. So I'm, I don't feel bad talking snubs for the acting categories. Uh, Lashana Lynch and Woman King, I feel, should could have been in this category over Carrie Condon or Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, I also feel Amy Lou Wood from Living could have been in this category. I thought she was incredible in that movie. I agree with that. Um, I want to go back to Carrie Condon for a second. So Carrie is the Carrie's the spoiler for Angela. I think you and I will both agree with that, right? Not anymore. Who's the spoiler? I think Jamie is. I think Jamie is. Really? Because Carrie Condon's really only won the BAFTA. And that's no, no, British but here's film. here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think if Angela wins, most of Carrie's votes went to Angela. If Angela picks up enough votes, then Jamie Lee Curtis wins. I think uh, Carrie is the spoiler for Angela, and that's what I meant. I think if she pulls enough votes away from Angela, because I don't think, I think the BAFTA, the British part of this whole thing, is going to be pulling away from Angela Bassett. I and I'm not trying to be rude here. I just I, I see Carrie playing spoiler for Angela to win this. I think that this. I, I don't know if I necessarily think this is like a splitty moment. I don't. I really don't. I think could there be a tie? Just, could this be a Barbara Streisand? There, there could be a tie here, and or there could just be. I don't know how this is going to go. I really don't. And like, this is literally throw a dart at a dartboard and see. What are you hearing from other people when you're talking to other people? Are you hearing Angela? I'm hearing people say Angela, but I'm not necessarily hearing voters say Angela. Do you know voters? Yeah, a few, not like a lot. Of course I haven't you gotten do. a chance to, the, my, my good, like my very good friend that we talk, we've not gotten to talk any of these categories. So I don't know how he went and how he voted. Um, he also tends to vote on who sent me a gift basket screener. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it, literally, he likes to go. Who sent me a screener? Let me try and vote for that for them because I want to encourage them sending screeners. Well, it's going to be an interesting night on Sunday when it comes down to supporting actress. But for uh, those keeping score, Michael is picking Angela Bassett for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and I am going with my homegirl Jamie Lee Curtis. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And FYI. I don't know if either one of us are right. <laughs> I don't know either. I think that it could, like I said, it could go anyway. I would be. I don't even know why I just recapped that because that was. Your I was going to say you just totally recapped and like swiped her from underneath me. Um, but you know what? You can That's recap the boys. That you can recap the boys. It's not like we don't know where that one's going. <laughs> and the nominees for best actor in a supporting role are Brendan Gleeson, the Banshees of Inisherin. Brian Tyree Henry, Causeway. Judd Hirsch, The Fablemans. Barry Keenan, The Banshees of Inishirin. He Hui Kwan, Everything Everywhere All at Once. So for Best Supporting Actor, and I apologize for uh, uh, Michael for scooping the recap for Best Supporting Actress, but... Um, I this is this is an easy one. I think this was actually one of the performances that I actually really did like. I didn't mind Judd Hirsch's uh, character in the Fablemans. I Brilliant. didn't mind Brendan Gleeson's for the Banshees of Inisherin, but to me, Ki Huan Quan Quinn. Ki Hui Quan. There you go. For everything, everywhere, all at once is getting it for me, and I think he. I think Hollywood did him a disservice by kicking him out of Hollywood for so long. And I'm so well, glad no, he, he, but he he's been on his own accord, but he's been, he, he was, he was trying to get oh, into sure. it. Exactly. And that's, this is what I mean. That's what I mean. I'm not trying to say like, Oh, bad, but I'm saying that I'm so happy. He's getting his service now. And I think he's going to win it. I, I, there's like every other character, every other actor, God bless them. But let's be honest, he's going to win. I would I would swap out Brendan Gleeson, Brian Tyree Henry. I would have put in Michael Ward from or, Empire of Light. Okay, yeah. 
I just think that he gave a really spectacular performance that I would have put him into that. Um, and obviously we didn't give Tom Hanks. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. For I'm Geppetto. Totally joking. <laughs> no, I just, this was a, this is a category that I think that it's a little weak. I think Ki Hui Kwan like is the standout, but Judd Hirsch gave a good fucking performance six minutes on screen and it was memorable. Well, but that's the thing with some of these supporting actors. Some of these supporting actor not, uh, Oscars usually go to those weird, like, I'm just thinking of Judy, uh, oh, what's her name? Judy Dench, when she was the queen in Shakespeare in Love. She was on the screen for a minute and a half, and she won the Oscar. And I'm going, what? So that's what I mean. Like, if you can give a six-minute performance and you can, like, knock it out of the park, good on you. But I think it's just, it's in the cards, right? It's completely in yeah, the Yeah, it's... It's in the algorithm. It's in the cards. And it was just a great performance. It was great. So I like it at the beginning one. of this show. We started talking like, oh, what do we feel and all that. Now we're like, it's the algorithm. It's the algorithm. It's the well, algorithm. No, no, no. I was always like. Literally the name the of the show is called It's in the Algorithm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you going to recap or do you want me to recap this? No, this is your category. I won't steal your category from you. Wow. Uh, so to recap, I was actually trying to hope you would recap it so I didn't have to pronounce Okay, it. I can recap it. <laughs> Thank you. So we are both going to go with Ki Hui Kwan for this one, um, for Everything Everywhere All at Once. And the nominees for Best Actress in a Leading Role are Kate Blanchett, Tar, Anna de Armas, Blonde, Andrea Riseborough, To Leslie, Michelle Williams, The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh. Everything, everywhere, all at once. All righty, best actress. Um, Kate Blanchett, Kate, you're a real one. That's the Ariana DeBose lyric for that one, I think. Um, I still, it's not as good as Angela Bassett did the thing, but okay, actress is in a leading role. Um, I was just letting you this. talk, girl, because that was just a hot were. mess. You I know, like- I know you were. Leave it in. Leave her in. Don't edit her out. She's just deranged. Um, yeah. Uh, what are we? What are your thoughts on? Actually, I think I know your thoughts on this. I think we have the same top two. Yeah, I I, I would completely a whole hun- wholeheartedly a hundred percent agree on that statement. Because you have Kate Blanchett from Tar, and I have Michelle Yeoh. Is that what? Yep. Yeah, but I know they were going to take the bitches award away. So what? Or her nomination away. I know they're going to take the bitch's nomination away, but Andrea Riseborough and Two Leslie was the best acting performance of the entire year. Yeah. It was the very best acting performance for the entirety of the year. And like, I'm glad she got nominated. I hope she has great things coming to her. Y'all should go watch that movie. It's an hour and a half long. It's like actually a, a watch of like a, a short, perfect length movie. It's not 40 hours long like most of these. It, brilliant. And can we get very real here? How is Michelle Williams in this category right now? How is Anna de, uh, uh, Amos in this category? Because she, she actually gave a, a brilliant no, performance. No, and got no, off no, 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 if you are intertwining a movie with actor and then real footage, you do not have the right to nominate yourself for best actress. And this movie was just that. And I thought she gave a crappy performance. Olivia uh, Coleman yes. should have been in here for uh, whatever she was in this year. I forget the Empire right off the top. I Empire agree Blight. with you that she should have been in that, but I would have put her over Michelle Williams. I love Michelle Williams. Why the fuck was she nominated? Because she's she and you and I disagreed on this, but I think she's the next Meryl Streep. I think she's going to oh, start getting. Michelle nom- Williams. I think she's going to start getting nominated for anything she does because Michelle Williams chooses movies that are Oscar movies, and she works with directors who get good performances out of her. Because and she's she hungry for an Oscar. She is yes. hungry for one because her like- ex, her ex husband got one, so she wants one as well. And I'm not trying to say anything bad again to the Heath Ledger. It's just she deserves an Oscar. She she deserves. Served an Oscar for the movies she did with, uh, oh, what the hell's his name? Blue something. God dang it. Blue Heaven? Oh. Uh, Blue Velvet? Blue Velvet. That's the one she should have won for. Listen, I know, but she I does think it she, for me. She didn't for this. She did for me. 
she did for me. I would have nominated a slew of other folks. The mother from Till. Like, I I love Michelle Williams. I wouldn't have put her here. And I thought Anna de Armas did give a good, I disagree with you. I think she gave a brilliant actress, like acting performance. I wouldn't have put her here. The movie's getting so much shit. And like, it's just not, a. it's just almost an unwatchable movie. Despite her brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performance, I would have thrown someone else in. I would have put Olivia Coleman in or, or, or even, I would have even thrown in Viola Davis that didn't love her performance, but I would have thrown that in over Anna de Armas or Michelle Williams. So you're going with Michelle but, Yeoh though, right? Yes. So to recap, I'm going with Michelle Yeoh. Well, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. Do not recap right now because I want to get this on record because this we talked about the best supporting actress, so the, the <clears throat> unknown, right? I think Kate Blanchett, while Michelle Yao is really doing well in the award ceremonies right now, I think a lot more people have been seeing Tar because they have been fucking putting, pulling that thing out left, right, and center. I've been watching TV over the last few weeks, an actual TV, TV, like cable TV, and Tar is on every commercial, it seems like. They are pumping They're that trying. movie. They are. And I don't know if that's a late push, but... If I would, if you would have asked me at the beginning of this, so when the nominations came out, I would have said yes, Michelle Yao is gonna get it. But when I saw Kate Blanchett and Tar, I was like, nope, it's going to be Kate. I listen. I think the two of them are the they're the two front runners. I would, I'm gonna hedge my bets on Michelle Yao. I I think that that's where it's going. I really strongly do. Um, and and there's kind of. And, I'm not going to lie. There is kind of the feel of like Kate Blanchett has two awards. Michelle Yeoh literally has none. Like Kate Blanchett's already established. This could be a real good game changer for Michelle Yeoh in her career, which has been long. But again, Jamie Lee Curtis also has a long career. That's Angela not Bassett. gotten much praise. Angela Bassett. She's gotten a long career. That's not gotten much praise. There's a lot of people that like when looking at this, Kate Blanchett was that movie. That that movie, if you took her out of it and you put someone with less skill in, it would have been mediocre. Well, we've said that on numerous occasions. We saw that we said sure. that about the lost last daughter or lost daughter last year with Olivia Coleman. We were like, if you take Olivia Coleman oh, out of that yeah. movie, you're like, it's you, a that, terrible movie. It exactly right. And if you take Kate Planchette and well, even and then the, in the reverse order of that, you have Blonde, where the movie was shit. Even mm. with a good actress that you kind of say is a good actress. Um, but I I think Kate is going to do it. And I, I know you and I disagreed wholeheartedly last year when it came to uh, um, who was going to win best. Uh, Jessica Chastain, because you did not like her and I loved her. No, I thought it was so horrible. But I chose her at the end of the day because I was like, uh, I know she's going to win. This one, I think it's going to be Kate Planchette. I honestly think it's going to be Kate Planchette. Listen, it could literally go either way. So I, I, they're neither. We could also both be wrong, and Michelle Williams could get her flowers, which will be a little annoying. But again, like a long career, where's her flowers? Um, but I am going to recap this one because we're just going to keep going in circles and fighting. <laughs> to recap, you are going with Kate Blanchette, and I am going with Michelle Yao. And the nominees for Best Actor are Austin Butler, Elvis, Colin Farrell, The Banshees of Inishirin, Brendan Fraser, The Whale, Paul Mescal, After Sun, Bill Nye, Living. So we are ending the major categories besides the last two that we're going to be talking about a little bit later with probably, uh, we talked about Best International Feature Film being 13 seconds. This is probably going to be about five seconds actually probably even less if i'm not mistaken because i honestly think no matter what happens no one is going to be shocked at what happens with best actor but for me as much as i disagree with some of the choices for nominees for best actor out of the five that were here brendan frazier for the whale is gonna is is got it I, I put I put Brendan Fraser for the whale. I I put it for the whale. I think Austin Butler could pull it out. I know you did not like his performance. I did. I thought he was the only thing about that movie that was worth it. He made that movie because he gave a brilliant, brilliant performance. 
I think that this was a weak, uh, this was a weak category. I think that we could have put others in here to make it a little stronger. Um, I'm also a little surprised that the boy from the Fablemans did not get put in over Paul Meskel. Or even After Bill Nye. Reason. I liked living. No, I, I did really too. Liked it. That was my second choice. It was between Brendan Fraser and Bill Nye for me. But when you talk about some of these, he could have been, he, he was on the cusp of, okay, eh, is it, is it, but I still liked it. And it was my number two yeah. choice. So to recap this, because I do not want to talk about Austin Butler any longer than I have to. Um, we are both going. That's right, everyone. You heard it here, right here, right now. We are five, five awards that are the same right now. So out of 23, we are five agreed upon awards. And we are going to be back because we both chose Brendan Fraser for the whale. And the nominees for Best Director are Martin McDonough, The Banshees of Inishirin, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinart, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Steven Spielberg, The Fablemans, Todd Field, Tar, and Ruben Ostland, Triangle of Sadness. All righty, direction, direction, direction. Um... What did you pick for this one? I'm really curious because there's like a very clear front runner on this, but I'm curious if like, yeah. I'm curious if you went with the front runner or if you went with the legacy. I went with my heart. So you picked the Fablemans? Yeah. I picked everything everywhere all at once. Shocker. They've, they've picked every award up. They have literally picked every award. No, up. and and I, 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 don't disagree with that. I I'm going with history on Oscars with this one because the history of Oscars, they traditionally have started giving uh, best director and best movie to two different people. Not always, but they have started splitting that up. So for me, I went with uh, Steven Spielberg. I think he gave, he got a better performance out of all these people, but I am just going with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> So in recent years, it's not just about getting a good performance out of it because women talking should be here if that's the case. Like Yo. women, Sarah Poli should have been here over. Can we talk about Triangle Polly. of Sadness and Best Picture? Because I really have a weird feeling about it. And I really have some very strong opinions about that movie. Um, We could talk about that in Best Picture. I can't talk about it here. Yo. I would remove probably Tar or Banshees to put in women talking because Sarah Poli did a brilliant job at pulling those acting performances out, but it's not necessarily now about that. It's about what sort of like groundbreaking thing did you do? Like how involved were you with like the actual creation of it, which the is why you're seeing movie. things like Chloe Zhao winning for Nomadland and like because of how involved with the different assets. And so that's why I think like, Everything Everywhere All at Once did something really groundbreaking, whereas like Sarah Poli just worked well with the actors, but nothing about that movie was necessarily groundbreaking in terms of the cinematography and and the set and the costumes. And the, the like, I think it didn't get enough love, but I also think a lot of that film was just the acting and directing and the script that made it a great film. Where, But like, that's why Would I think you... Everything Everywhere All at Once is going to be, because they were very involved. They did a lot of very groundbreaking storytelling and they crafted it very well. I am. I, I'm. I'm. I'm glad that Steven Spielberg got the nomination for this movie, and I, I will be upfront with that. Do I think it was the best picture overall? No, but out of the five there, he is the legacy that is Hollywood, and this was his love letter to Hollywood in some sense. And I, I just, I feel like with his the writing of the script and his uh, style of directing, I think it just overall for me, it, 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 it goes to Steven Spielberg. It, would I be upset if it doesn't? No. Would I be upset if it goes to everything, everywhere, all at once? Not one bit. But to me, I just found that he gave a he, he, he got a better performance out of all the people there. And I know you're so gonna my, say actor wise he didn't because only one of them got no. nominated. I just no 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 I don't. I think that Paul Dano could have been nominated, but they tried to put him in supporting instead of leading. Um, and I, I just said the kid should have been nominated too. Um, 
my question for you is, if Steven Spielberg was not attached to this movie, would it be as nominated as much as it is? Because in a lot of these categories, we said it was like a throwaway nomination. If Steve... Like same exact movie, Steven Spielberg's name is not on it. Yes. I don't agree. I don't think it would. And I think that that's, I think that it's getting as much, like as many nominations as it got because his name's attached and because he is a legacy. It's a good film. It's a great film. I enjoyed it. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, fl- I'm going to flip the switch here. Sure. Right. So everything everywhere all at once was written and created with Jackie Chan in mind. Mm-hmm. Do you think it would be getting this much love if Jackie Chan was in the uh, lead role instead of Michelle Yao? Oh, is the, if it was him instead of Michelle Yao? Yeah. No, I don't think Jackie Chan's as strong an actor as her. And if he was in the Ki Hui Kwan, I think that I think that it would have probably gotten a lot of. I don't think he would have gotten a not acting nomination. I think it still would have gotten the categories it got because it had a lot of really groundbreaking stuff. But do I just you don't think, think Jackie would have been nominated? Do you think the movie would have gotten nominated if it wasn't for Michelle Yao for Best Picture? For all of it, because Michelle Yao I do. really, really okay. I do, and I'm not saying that would, Michelle Yao is not a good character because she's a really good actress. I really do like her. I just, I'm just thinking if if Jackie Chan was in this movie, I do not think he would be up here right now. I think if Jackie Chan was in, the, you know what? That's also a good point. Jackie Chan's not as strong an actor. I don't know if it would have maybe gotten as much in terms of like he wouldn't have. He would not have gotten nominated. I do not think he would have gotten nominated, but I think that the directing still would have the, a lot of the visual stuff and a lot of the production stuff and the technical stuff. I think it still would have like Avatar got nominated for a bunch of technical stuff and it didn't have a single acting category. I think that you would have seen it still pick up a lot of acting category and a lot of the other categories and which would have put it in best picture. Cause like Dune was a best picture nominee. I just don't think it would have been a strong a contender. Going back to the director category for you for a second. Sure. I just wanted to make sure I got his name right before I mentioned him. Do you think Darren Aronofsky should have gotten nominated? Which one did he do? Whale. No. Really? I do he, not. he was the one that I was on the cusp for. I liked the movie a lot. I just, I don't agree it should have been in Best Picture, and I don't necessarily agree it should have been in for directing. I think it got the categories it, it got. I would have the only other one I maybe would have put in would be um, what's her name uh, Sadie Sink, but she's okay. a little young, and supporting at, and and she's a little young, and I think Hong Chao. When you look at supporting actress, I would have put her in over it. Yeah, I, I, I would have kept Hong Chao instead of Sadie. But Sadie did was the only other thing I was like if there was a sixth person I would have put her there. So to recap, I'm going with everything everywhere all at once, and you are going with the Fablemans. And the nominees for Best Picture are All Quiet on the Western Front. Avatar, The Way of Water. The Banshees of Inishirin. Elvis. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. The Fablemans. Tar. Top Gun Maverick. Triangle of Sadness. And Women Talking. So now we turn to our very last, our very last after almost two hours of doing this, the, almost the length of the actual Oscars, we are here to finally talk about Best Picture. And we have, I have some very strong opinions about some of these movies, which ones should have, which ones shouldn't have been nominated. Um, I Before I even give my pick, I want to start with the Triangle of Sadness. And I want to know, did you like this movie? And if so, what are you smoking? Because I want some, because this was horrible. I liked it. I really did like it. I think it was a great ensemble show. And again, we did not see a lot of, oh, Abigail from this could have been supporting actress. But again, it's an ensemble show. How do you break up that cast? This is one that could have, if they had an ensemble cast category, it would have been nominated. I think it was a great movie. I think it was weird. It was wacky. It was fun. It was like a little, it was it was like a fun critique about like the wealthy and, and like 
roles in society. And I just, I thought it was a lot of fun. I think it would have been a great stage show also. Do you think Woody Harrelson should have been nominated? No. I've been hearing a lot of people when I talk to people who've watched it saying he should have been nominated for supporting actor. Nope. I do not think so. I think that again, it's just, this is the woman talking issue. The whole cast was pretty good. How do you separate just one? Which leads us to let's throw in an ensemble cast for it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I think it's going to get fully shafted at the awards. I will be shocked if it wins anything. Top Gun Maverick. Only reason it got nominated was because it saved cinemas. Correct. I don't know. I really, I like. I didn't. I didn't love it. I'm not a big. I didn't. I'm not a big movie. That's not my kind of movie. That's my husband's kind of movie. And he was like, "It's one of the. It's one of the best movies that I've seen." He's like, "It's a great top. It was better than the first. He liked it better than the first. Sorry, people, if that offends you, but he did. And and he said it was a great film. I am taking his word for it. I think that because they are now trying to put in a little bit of the bigger blockbuster movies that are doing actual good movies. I would like to see them start giving horror films some love, but I'm I'm hoping that this is a sign that we're moving in a direction where it's not just all a bunch of indie films like we've seen in recent years. Out of the 10 that were nominated, what two should have been dropped? Avatar The Way of Water and Controversial Tar. I'll agree with that. I'll actually very much agree with that. Those two statements. What would you have put in instead? Because this is this is because these. Which ones would you have put in? Mm, that's a very good question. I because I'm starting to watch some of the quote unquote snubs, and honestly, I would have I would have enjoyed seeing Till in Best Picture. I would have enjoyed seeing um actually I would have enjoyed seeing the Empire of Light in Best Picture. Um to Leslie? Yeah. I would have seen to Leslie. I would really have liked to I'm shocked that you Leslie, didn't say but... that. That's what I was trying to tee well, up there, but it's like to Leslie, this is my issue with to Leslie though. It was a fantastic film, but I wouldn't give it any other categories. And I feel like if I can't give it anything more than the one performance category, that I'm like. I don't know if I should put it in best picture. It was a great performance. It was a fun movie, but like nothing else about it was necessarily groundbreaking, life-changing. It was her performance that was life-changing and made, made me really just like the movie. It was a, if it would have been a fine movie without her, it was a spectacular movie because of her. Yeah. What would you have put in? Empire of Light. You would have put that one in also? Yeah. I think Olivia Coleman in that movie got very much snubbed this, this round. And I, you know, I love my Olivia Coleman. I think she's an amazing actress, uh, but uh, they really did her uh, dirty this, uh, this Oscars. And yet again, she'll, she'll come back. She'll come up with some other movie here. She'll be the queen of some movie and she'll win that Oscar against Glenn Close for Sunset Boulevard. So uh, who knows who really, really knows. Um, you I, wouldn't have put multiverse of madness doctor strange or morbius no 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 fuck i'd choose like scooby doo before i put a marvel movie in there because they were all shit <laughs> this year <laughs> um so with that our picks for the best picture for the 95th academy awards and i'm going to preface this by saying um mr michael nichols pate usually has a very bad track record on choosing best picture so i'm gonna let you go first so this year this is one where i'm like I'm just going to look at the algorithm and I'm just going to go with it. Cause if I went with my heart, I really would have picked women talking and that doesn't really have a shot. It really doesn't. Um, It's sad again. And I'm going to keep saying it's sad. It does not have a shot. Uh, I'm going to go with everything everywhere all at once. It won the PGA. There's only three films in the last 20, 25 years that have won the producers guild award and then have lost the Oscar. So I'm really hoping that this is not one of those years. So for me, 
uh, hearkening back to the original start of the show way back about 12 years ago. I'm going with All Quiet on the Western Front. I, Which that won the BAFTA. Yeah. And I'm not even looking at that. I just overall think it was a much better movie. And when it comes to directing, I would have put the director of All Quiet on the Western Front in the best director category, but they didn't. So I think it got snubbed there. It did. Uh, it did. You look at all the other categories and then you put the triangle of sadness as best director. I know you and I will disagree with that, but, or even tar, like I would take tar out. I really would take tar out. Quite on, like to me, if you encapsulate 2022 in film, all quite on the Western front has to be the top movie of 2022. In my opinion, I know you and I will disagree with that, but all quiet on the Western Front for me. I don't think it's. I don't disagree with it being a top movie. I don't think it's the number one movie. I, I think do. that that goes to Morbius. It's morbid time. <laughs> well, everyone, no. we've hit peak. <laughs> We're making Morbius jokes. Oh God! Uh, it's morbid time. Um, he morbed all over the screen. Oh, totally. He was so morbid that morbid time. <laughs> I'm um, no. I'm sorry. I think Blonde should win Best Picture. That was an amazing. I, it was a good acting, singular <laughs> acting performance. Just one singular. Um. No. I mean, I just I would like for. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. My brain is all over the place, and I'm apologizing for that right now. But I just, <laughs> I think Woman Talking was my favorite movie of the year. If if. All Quiet's yours. I would put All Quiet in my probably top five or six. Yeah. But I do like women talking a lot. I know you did. I You even posted on Facebook that you liked it, that everyone needs to go see this movie. I did. And I have not been <laughs> posting like that on Facebook with these movies. I did try and like come for Women King on Facebook. And then I got like shouted down. And I'm like, I guess I'm not coming for Women King anymore. <laughs> so to recap. Best picture for Michael Nichols Pate. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And for Chris Brown. All quiet on the Western Front. So, two hours into this, we have gone through 23 categories. I hope you sit down and have listened to all 23 categories. <laughs> and if you haven't, make sure you do throughout the entire year. Um, this has been fun. Uh, recapping. Highs, lows? I liked this year better than I liked, I think, the last two years. I think that, I know you didn't like, like any of the movies, but I liked a, a lot of them. And it made a lot of these categories, I think, more fun for me watching through them. I felt like last year was such a slog. I really did. And this year did not necessarily feel like it. There were a couple of movies I think I texted you. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? After Sun is one of those movies. <laughs> so but just a brief re-re-re-recap. So when the nominations came out, Michael and I were chatting. And I think we did a part of uh, episode one on this. And we said, okay, we're going to watch these. And we're going to do this Oscar, Oscar predictions. I literally sat down and watched almost all of them within a week. In and like a half. week. In a week and a half. And I can tell you, I went crazy that week because I my husband was gone. I had nothing to do. So I was literally just sitting around doing nothing. And I was able to get all of them. Well, the majority of them. Like there's a few that I had to wait and all that. But overall, I got to see all of them. Um I'm Would gonna you do that again though. Oh fuck no. Hell fuck You'll pace enough. them. I would pay I would do at least like two two to three a week, not this fucking fifty-five in a week and a half. That was insane. I don't know why. I, when you said you did that, I'm like, I literally watched like 12. <laughs> like there was a couple of weekends where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna watch maybe like three or four because I'm by myself and it's a Saturday or a Sunday, and why not? But like you just powered through them and I'm like, uh, girl. No, just 
One a night, maybe. So if for anyone who's actually watching this, you you can see how tired I look. <laughs> and the, the fact that I started uh, February watching all these movies and we're now in March and I am exhausted, that tells you how much I've been sleeping. <laughs> so uh, overall... It was a good year. I think it wasn't the best year for movies, but um, it's going to be fun Sunday night. It's going to be fun, and I'm looking I'm forward to seeing who will get slapped, who will get punched, what the crisis team for the Oscars is going to do. Barring any be fun- a joke, they're oh. going to be a joke. Who do they're going to make slap jokes? They're going to make a joke about the crisis team being here. Oh, who's presenting best best actor or best actress? Yeah. Who do you think? I think it's going to be Anthony Hopkins. Ooh, that's a good that's a good pick. Um, I don't, I don't think know, he was Chris there Rock? last year, right? No. I it was think... two years ago he won. Uh, no, but usually, so if you win, then the following you, you yeah. present. I don't think he was there last year, right? He wasn't. He doesn't usually go. He's not like a big award person. Also, Frances McDormand might not go. She's still deciding because she says, fuck the award shows. Uh, yeah, she says fuck the award shows until she gets nominated and wins exactly. and shows up. So like Francis, girl. How about how about Willow Smith? Is he doing anything right now? Not the son, she... the other Willow Smith. The the actual uh, uh, Jaden Smith. It's Jaden and Willow. Jaden Smith. There's two Jaden Smiths, right? No, there's I don't the no, one from po- Detective Detective Pokemon. Oh my god, this this conversation just went downhill. Are you talking about Detective Pikachu? Yeah, the Hold guy, on. his name, Smith. I don't think it's It's Jayden. Smith. Detective Pikachu. This is real time, like. Justice Smith. Folks. Justice Smith. Justice. I'm like, I, I, I'm i like, it's not Jaden. And now you have my brain all fried. I don't know what a, what's a thing. Or they'll bring in Joe Biden and wheel him out. Joe Biden. Hey, I got my aviators on. I, 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 yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready for the awards. I'm excited. I'm this year trying to see more things throughout the year. Um, just so that I'm not doing so many movies at the end. Cause I just, I got started to get a little burnt out in the middle of it. Because we, 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 we try to bring, we try to watch, we watch all these. I should say we watch all these. And uh, I know there's other people out there who will only do the top few or like even the top, like best picture, best director, but we want to, we want to do service to you guys. So, um, Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of No, Not Them. Usually we end on a joke, but after two and a half hours, I'm 90% sure I'm joked out. All I can say is (laughs) blame it on the fucking (laughs) algorithm because one of us is going to be right. One of us will be wrong. Uh, Our friendly wager is always there. It's just a friendly wager. I'm looking forward to potentially picking up a friendly wager. I don't know what that is, but uh, until then, uh, Michael Nichols, uh, Greatly appreciate it as always. Absolutely happy to be here. So remember, he's not Mike Nichols. I'm not Chris Brown because this is no, not them.